All right, good morning, Tartan. This is Josh Granlund. I'm going to take you through the week nine stuff for connected classrooms. Uh, now, as we head into the last three weeks of the school year here, we're just looking at um, applications outside of Google that you can use inside the classroom. Um, there's literally thousands of things that you can use, okay? <clears throat> so get your adventure hat on and we'll dive into some of them. Um, I'm going to show you some of my favorite apps. The first one is called Padlet. And Padlet is this great site that allows collaboration, just super easy collaboration. You can make an account, you don't have to make an account, and as long as anyone has the link, um, they can add something to Padlet. So here it is, this is Padlet.com, super simple, click on create something. Like, okay, so here's your whiteboard and you just click on it double click anywhere I'm gonna write cats okay now I can write something about cats I could take a picture of a cat with my webcam um, this works with the Chromebooks and everything you know laptops if it has a camera on it then I'll take a picture uh, from the webcam. Um, if they click this, it's going to pop up a little thing right up here that'll ask you to allow Padlet to enable your webcam. That's just fine. Um, you can upload files like Word documents, uh, PowerPoints, Google Slides, Google Forms, you know, Illustrator files, anything that you want. Um, you can old, um, upload a file here and then you can also put in links. So you can type in a YouTube link if you wanted to, and it would pop that up as well. So like I could come here, come to one of my videos here, go back over to Padlet, and add that and then there's a link to the video right there okay and that will work with uh, any web page um, and like I said anyone that has this link up here can add to the wall so if you wanted to use this as a collaboration tool between you know teachers or a teach you know teacher sets up maybe some questions and all the students can come here and post their answers um, students could use it together to collaborate on a project and kind of gather materials all into one space. It's really flexible to use and um, it's just very straightforward. The next thing that I love to use is sc Screencast Omatic. Okay, um, if you type in Screencast Omatic, um, it has this, yeah screen recording software. So all the videos that I've been doing for this, um, I've been using this and it's it's great. It's very easy to use. You just click record here and um, if you have a microphone plugged in or if you have a microphone connected to your computer, it'll launch and go. Now this doesn't work so good on the school Chromebooks, but there's another thing you can do for that if we go over to the right side here in the mini menu you can go down to extensions or more tools here and then extensions and you know here's your list of extensions that you do have and then you can get more extensions too so in here I'm gonna type in screencast oh and there it is screencastify it's a different project um, it'll only record like kind of one screen at a time but for the most part that's all you need um, so I like to do this uh, I'll, I'll have students you know demonstrate their knowledge about Photoshop or um, video production using this they'll have to do a screencast of them talking into a microphone pointing out different things um, using Screencastify and then it can save the video either to your computer or it can post the video to your Google Drive 
um, or it can save it to your computer directly. And um, so it's very flexible, really simple to use tool. So I'd highly recommend this Screencastify. Um, this can be really good too if you want to have students create uh, kind of their own videos or um, let's say they have to be gone and they have to do a presentation, they can they can actually do their presentation, have their Google slide thing, use Screencastify and record their voice to go along with it um, as they're clicking through their presentation. So just another tool um, that you could use in the classroom. Another great place to go to find some new apps um, is if you go to your Google Drive and you go to the new section, you click on more, um, you see I've kind of loaded up mine here. You know, I can do a floor plan, I can, you know, organize a room and a house. Um, this is uh, Lucid Chart is like a flow editor, so it like does like flow charts and stuff like that. Meister Labs, this is a mind mapping tool. Um, you can make music with this, you can edit photos with this. Um, anyway, I'm going to go to Connect More Apps. And you can just see, I mean, I don't have time to go into all of these, but you can just see there's thousands of things here. And so this is a great thing to kind of um, have, you know, look through it yourself, get adventurous, and um, you'll come across some pretty cool stuff. Um, now, yesterday we had actually two days ago we had a meeting where you had to um, go to a tech tech room or seek some tech advice on how to incorporate things into your classroom and the question that I received uh, several times was about how to incorporate multimedia things into into your class um, the easiest way to do it is if you have a if you have students in groups if someone in their group has an iPhone um, they can use iMovie and it's probably the simplest way to go um, there's lots of tutorials about how to use iMovie on the iPhone and um, it's really easy for them to set up and if they have questions they can can come and ask me um, but it's the most flexible powerful device and then they can just send it to YouTube or um, even email you the video directly and then it's it's done. They don't even have to get onto a computer and it will make a really nice product too. Um, so anyway, that's a lot of things that are outside of Google that I hope help you in creating and planning for your classes.